Yo, what's going on everybody? It is straight out of Boston here. Today I'm back for episode number 47 of my Tampa Bay Rays Let's Play series here on Out of the Park Baseball 18. So we are about a third of the way through the month of September and right in the thick of the second wild card race. We were lulling around 500 for quite a while, really up until this eight game winning streak that we've reeled off. We had been pretty much a 500 team, but we won eight in a row. And it's come at the right time because for a while there was pretty much like I want to say almost like a seven or eight team mix for this second wild card, and now it's going to be probably uh, two of these three or two of these four teams. I think, or what is it, Minnesota, Minnesota and Kansas City? I get confused. So it is going to be two of these four teams because Minnesota and Kansas City are also very close in the division and Cleveland. So there are three AL Central teams, and then the Austin Orcas and Tampa Bay kind of battling over three uh, playoff spots. Houston and New York have pretty much safely pulled away in their divisions. Even if, even while we've gotten hot, New York has continued to play very well seven of their last ten, and they've won five in a row. So not gaining much ground on them in, uh, in that time frame. So we've got 22 games left in the season, and that is seven series. I guess we have a four-game series mixed in there somewhere. But here we go. Going up against Cleveland, this is one of the teams that we are battling. We extend the winning streak now. It is up to nine. See if we can get that to double digits. No, we do finally lose. And, um, you know, some of the streak has coincided with us getting a little bit healthier. Uh, in the month of August, we suffered a couple injuries to our starting rotation. Both Snell and uh, Funkhauser both went out. So we were kind of piecing it together with the fifth starter spot and the fourth starter spot for a couple weeks there. Now we've got the rotation a little bit more solidified. And the bullpen's been uh, aided a little bit by the additions of Kyle Freeland. And even Barrios has stabilized things a little bit, although not uh, to a huge extent. Melitakis, uh, he's been okay for us. He's been banged up as well. Diaz has actually performed pretty well for us since we got him from uh, Detroit. That's kind of a good sign. So the bullpen's been pieced together a little bit. Schrader, how's Andy Schrader doing? He's got a 177 area with us, so a lot of those guys we picked up have been playing well. And Funkhauser, I think, has been pitching well too. 378, not too bad. Um, and then as for the lineup, Devers, he's still been hitting even though Roberts is still playing him at second base. Uh, Donnelly, they, mainly they've been doing that because Donnelly has actually been pretty decent and his defense at third base is so good. So I guess, you know, if he continues to hit close to league average, I'm not totally against it. But Odor, it's not like he's played terribly since we got him. He's actually been better. And then I made a couple minor league free, free agent signings. Jaren Kendall, I don't think this guy's actually going to be eligible for the... Uh, the postseason roster because I signed him after September 1st uh, but he's actually starting every day in left field for us right now because Kyle Jacobson got hurt he's out for the year we got Victor Robles back finally he had been out for a while and Jake Bowers has been uh, hitting the ball pretty well since we traded for him from uh, Toronto so things uh, a lot of the moves we made are kind of working out Carson Kelly I also signed uh, because we lost our catcher Juan Mendez for a little bit, but uh, he will be back in six days. You can see Jacobson's out for the year along with Gottwald and Fisher. But uh, Correa has been getting hot. He had been struggling all year, now finally starting to piece it together and at the right time, too. And then Coronel is having an MVP caliber year. This guy, just look at, he's on base for 9.2 war. It was at like 8.7 last I checked, but 54. He's at 48 bombs right now. Got the 1068 OPS. He's just, uh, <laughs> he's turning into a monster, which is why I pretty much went all out to sign him. But, uh, all right, so now we shift. Did we just, no, we took two of three from Cleveland. And now we have a series against Boston. We beat them 10-1 to 1 in game one of that series. And we have now control, we are now in control of the first wild card spot. But still, what, eight games off the pace of the Yankees? So, it's still looking pretty unrealistic. Go take a major collapse from the Yankees. But the way we're playing right now... I have to be playing with a lot of confidence. We just whooped Boston for the second straight day. 12-1. to 1. So we're a game and a half up on Austin. We sweep Boston. A game up on Cleveland. Game and a half up on Austin. And New York is now six back. New York has lost three in a row. So maybe if we, if we can get to this series within like four or five games, then it would still be reasonable not not reasonable but feasible I guess I don't know it would take a massive effort I'm still not uh getting my hopes up but they just lost again and we won again we beat Baltimore to kick off this four game set in Camden Yards not really gaining any separation in the wild card race unfortunately because Austin and Cleveland are both playing well beat Baltimore again New York gets off the schneid there so we're five back of them 
Actually, five and a half back because we're six in the last column. So, yeah, I don't think... Their magic number is ten. We'll see what it is when we get to this three-game set. How many more times do we play them? Is that it? That is it. So, we play Toronto and Cincinnati. Cincinnati's decent. Toronto's in last place, or second to last place, though. But we got two more games against Baltimore before we get to any of that. And let's see if we stay hot. We do fall to Baltimore in game three of that series. I'm going to activate... Juan Mendez, and let's just keep our eye on the standings. Six and a half back of New York now. So unless we win and New York loses, we get it to five and a half. Then I think it's gonna be pretty tough, even if we have a good series here and we lose to Baltimore. So now it looks like we we've all these three teams have stayed hot and cold at the same time. I think it's gonna come down to these three teams for this wild card spot. And at this point. Uh, we're not going to catch New York. I think their magic number is probably down to five or s at seven. But still, that's pretty good for September 21st. And they can uh, extend their... They can uh, pull away here into this series. Let's see. We lose game one, six to one. Game two, taking a while to simulate. Oh my god, we fall in extra innings. Now Cleveland takes control of that first wildcard spot. We've lost four in a row. Austin, luckily, has lost five in a row. So they are getting cold at the right time for us. And can we not get swept by New York, maybe? Okay, good job. So we stay within a half game of Cleveland. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be too concerned about getting home field for that that wild card round, but uh it would be nice, of course. Either way, uh looks like Houston is gonna pull away with that best record unless that's only a four game gap, four and a half game gap, but I think they're probably gonna going to Secure that. So we got Toronto. Luckily, we played Toronto seven more times, I think. And, yep, we beat them twice. Now we are game and a half up on Cleveland. Beat them again. And Austin is four games back of us. We're four. We have our magic number is four for a wild card spot. And now it is two with another loss from Austin and another win for us. New York five games back. What's their magic number? It is only one, so we have to win out. And they have to lose out six games back and seven in the loss column with seven to play. So we are going to be in that wild card game. It is looking like our magic number is one after another loss, I think, from Austin. We're five and a half games up on them, five in the loss column. And is that five in the loss column? Five to play? Why did I say seven to play earlier? Either way, there we go. We, we secure the playoff spot. We clinch a playoff spot with the win over Cincinnati and let's see it for actually let's look at it let's look at the message race clinch the wild card so we will be back in the postseason and this is postseason appearance what seven number seven out of eight years for us so pretty good string I don't know I kind of wish it would uh mark the times we lost in the wild card round I feel like that happened at least once but, or maybe we've won every wild card round we've played in. I don't know. But we've played in a couple wild card rounds. And luckily, usually we've had good success because we've had Chris Sale, who's had uh, some pretty big games for us over the years. But, you know, probably won't be the, I mean, well, he's, it won't be the case this year. We won't have Sale. We not, we don't, even if we did, he wouldn't be his old self because he's washed up now. But uh, still, maybe, let's see. I'm not sure who we're going to throw. Snell has gotten hot over the second half and since he's gotten healthy. So maybe it would be him. Fido's had another good year, and then Honeywell and Funkhauser are certainly that 3-4 with Lara probably going to the bullpen, although he uh, righted the ship a little bit this year, had a decent year as the fifth starter. Oh yeah, look at those strikeouts, 123 strikeouts and 100, and, uh, or 121 strikeouts and 98 innings so far, and let's wrap up this regular season before we get to the wild card round, I think Cleveland has four games left, alright, so now we're, now they have three, we're full game ahead of them. With three to play, we have both clinched that spot, so that will be the wild card round. It's actually, it could be Minnesota who we face. Uh, I don't really know anything about either team, so I'm not sure who I'd rather face, but I don't think we've faced either team recently in the playoffs. But, all right, now we are even with Cleveland after we lose to Toronto. We need to continue to play well, but more than anything else, just stay healthy. We're still even with Cleveland. I don't know what the tiebreaker would be if we both finish with the same record. Are we going to get swept to end off the season? That would be kind of a bad omen. Although, I don't really, I wouldn't really actually put much into that. But there we go, a 12-2 win. And we are now, ooh, okay, so it's Minnesota 
So Cleveland won that last game. Minnesota has one more game to play. They must have had a rain out that last weekend. So it's going to be them or Cleveland. And no matter what, actually, we're going to get the tiebreaker because either they lose and we have a better record than them, or if they tie, they're going to play that game 163. And the loser of that game is going to have a worse record than us. So we've already we've already clinched that first wild card round, uh, no matter what, which is pretty nice. So or we've already clinched home field in that first wild card round is what I meant. And we had the home run champion, Wilfredo Cornell. He might be the MVP. Of course, Mazzara, I'm sure had a, another monster year. What was his WAR? He was only seven point four. So maybe uh maybe Cornell has a chance. But man, the contract he got, I was looking at this after the offseason, the contract he got from Texas was, uh, that was so doable. I could have, I could have gotten him probably, but I don't know if I could have gotten him and Cornell. And it is going to be Minnesota. Minnesota lost that final game. Cleveland is the winner of the AL Central. Minnesota finishes with 87 wins and they lost uh, seven of their last 10. So a team sort of struggling as they uh, come into this game. And a team that does not have very good pitching, 793 runs allowed this year. So that is what they struggle with. But some good power bats in their lineup, Rowdy Tellez, Miguel Sano. Their uh, Pythagorean win-loss must not have been that good. Well, keep going. It was 83-79, uh, and 79, but they were in the playoffs the last two years. So a team with a little bit of pedigree, at least. That's I mentioned it before, but that's another thing I look at is teams that have been in the playoffs the last couple of years. Because they've established themselves a little bit. This is Cleveland's first year back since uh, 2019. So, interesting uh, difference there. But, yeah, you see the two power bats. And they were fourth in the in the league in home runs. Second in runs scored. So, pretty good offense. Max Kepler had a good offensive year at the top of their lineup. Josh Dadson, not too bad. Winton Yarn, I like this guy. Winton Yarn is... A nice little player, and he had a really good year for them. 4.8 war. Uh, ben Wordvet. Ooh, he's a really nice catcher. 341. I don't know why he hits 8th for them, but uh, still, it's a really good year. Isaac Paredes. I think he was one of the guys traded to Detroit in the uh, in the Justin Wilson trade, if I recall correctly. They're starting rotation. McCormick and Barrios. That's not a bad one, too, actually. Not like... Not terrible. Not like 12th in run score and 11th in starters. ERA bad, but I guess after that, it gets... A little rough, and they are going to be without Raul Alcantara, as well as uh, Nick Gordon. He's back after the wild card. This Michael Bakia guy will be active, and Elliot will be out. So they're without a few key guys, but we also have our fair share of injuries. We've had, I don't want to say bad luck injury-wise, because we have most of our guys healthy for the playoffs, which is really, once you get to this stage, the biggest thing is just having your guys healthy. And, you know, we're without a pretty a pretty key bullpen arm, a guy who got hurt once again, and Jim Fisher, who just, I don't know what's going to happen to him now. I feel like he's probably going to be done after this. But um, Jacobson, he's out. We could have used him in the corner outfield, that's for sure. And uh, Gottwald, who was a waiver claim. So really just two guys, I feel like, it would have helped us out. But uh, really not too bad at the end of the day. So... All right, uh, let's just see where we finished up with a few things. We were third in runs scored and sixth in runs again. So a nice, we had a nice run differential. Uh, yep, 88 and 74, not too shabby. And we ended up getting solid years out of our front two starters. Honeywell, another kind of disappointing year. This is sort of just what he's turned into. I always, I don't know, he's had pretty much the same numbers the last three years. But his ratings, like, you would think he would be better with his ratings, but... He'll have two years left on his contract. They're both team options. He could become a trade candidate at some point, but we kind of need him in the rotation. We don't really have anyone uh, who could replace him unless we get someone back or sign someone. So that's really the only scenario in which I could see trading him. But he's kind of just settled into that, you know, sort of fourth starter role. And like I said, we got good year. We got good second halves out of some of our guys in our bullpen, like Freeland and Diaz, Schrader. So we might have a couple of weapons here to lean on. In the bullpen, Pint and DeYoung, of course, are going to be kind of the anchors, I think, as they were for uh, pretty much the entirety of the regular season. And Cornell finished with a 10-win season, 60 home runs. He got hot at the end of the year somehow. He was he somehow played better than he had like pretty much all year. He had three home runs those last four games. He got the 60 bombs, only 39 doubles, and how many hit? He had 100. Or he had 184 hits, so he had lots of singles, but uh, no triples. Did hit 308. 91 walks, 123 strikeouts, 10 wins. I would be pretty surprised if he didn't win MVP at this point. 
He got us to the playoffs. He pretty much think about that. By I'm not saying this is how you should necessarily view War, but without him, like even if we just had like a a, a good but not great first baseman, we wouldn't have even been close to the playoffs. But he was a beast for us. I'm not saying that's people think I get hung up too much on War. The only reason I like War so much is because it's an all around metric. Um, it it tries to encompass pretty much all aspects of the game, whereas just looking at a stat like WRC plus, like that's only hitting. Or BSR, that's only base running. Or, you know, War tries to incorporate base running, offense, defense, all that stuff. And that's why I like looking at it. I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying Carlos Carrillo was automatically a better player this year than Devers because he had .3 better War. Like, that's such a small difference that that could be, you know, due to so many different things like that. That's the thing about statistical analysis is people get too carried away with it and act like that's the only thing I'm going to go on. Like, you just have to be smart with statistical analysis. Like, that's all that it really is, but... Anyway, um, that's why you take stats classes. So let's do this. We've got the series against Minnesota. We've got the game against Minnesota. The AL wildcard round 2026. I want to say this is like our third or fourth appearance in the wildcard round. And we are going to give the ball to Blake Snell, who was hot at the end of the year. Look at his last few starts. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Strikeouts were up. Keeping the walks down. Keeping the ball in the ballpark, as he always does. And, uh, yeah, had another... Had a solid year, got the ERA down at 3.35, and he's kind of continued this sort of run that he's been on the last few years as uh, one of the best pitchers in the American League. And he's another guy with two years left on his deal, just like Honeywell. So he will get the ball. We are, I think our roster is going to be good. We've got Grossvenner, Rodriguez, Odor, Coca, and Dunn on the bench. Is there anyone else I would think you might want over him? Yeah, so I can't put can't put the guys I signed after I could I might want Carlos Gomez Barrios I'm not too concerned about getting on the roster I probably am going to want Carlos Gomez though over Wilkerman Rodriguez certainly and I probably don't uh, do I want Malatakis did have a nice strikeout to walk ratio with us his peripherals actually weren't bad and he's a lefty he would give us two lefties so I might keep him but we can definitely get Gomez on there. I'll leave Barrios off for now. But it is kind of unfortunate. I couldn't... Uh, how did Kendall do for us? Jaren Kendall. It's a little bit unfortunate I couldn't get him on on the roster. Because... I don't know. I guess he wasn't. <laughs> he was actually terrible for us. All right. So who cares? Let's do it. AL wildcard round. 2026 against Minnesota. We are back. In this thing, it is going to be Shane Baz getting the ball for them. So they must have used their good starters. I guess Baz was pretty decent for them after they got him. But remember, he was making starts for us earlier this year. And I think I waived him. Or I don't even know what happened. I don't know. I don't remember how he got on Minnesota. But he ended up having a solid year for Minnesota down the stretch. And we'll see if he pitches well again in, in this game. Um, we've got our lineup. Almost fully healthy, mostly healthy. Uh, we got Mendez back. Donnelly is going to be in there for Odor. Donnelly ended up having a decent little year. 2.1 war and only 383 plate appearances. So kind of a good little year out of him. Lane Plowman getting the start in right field. Uh, he's in there because of the injury to Jacobson. Jacobson had been getting... He had been the primary starter in right field before he had gotten hurt. But we're going to go with him over... Uh, Grossvenner was pretty good for us uh, filling in for... Robles throughout the year he kind of struggled a little bit more as he stopped playing every day but I'm sure that was just a little bit of regression as well but we're going to go with the normal lineup I don't see uh, any changes that need to be made here so Blake Snow on the mound against Shane Baz former Tampa Bay Ray an interesting pitching matchup here from the Trop Trop at Canna Field hosting a yet another wild card round and here we go kicking things off and we are scoreless through two Minnesota with a couple hits and Tampa getting their first hit in the third, but still scoreless through three. Snell is at 60 pitches already, but has not given up a run yet. And now it is still 0-0 in the bottom of the fourth. Baz throws another scoreless inning. Snell at 72 pitches. Keep an eye on that as that uh, gets up there closer to 100. Baz is only at 55 pitches. He only has two strikeouts, though. And it's still nothing going. Still scoreless. Snell having... Some quicker innings now. Pitch count a little bit better, in better shape. I'm honestly kind of just want to start going batter by batter. I'm feeling a little bit nervous. This is a close game so far, and that is going to be a fly out to lead off this inning. Now Kepler with one out. That's going to be a ground out. 
Two down for Rowdy Tellez. And he strikes out swinging. So Snell is through six scoreless, getting the top third of the lineup there. One, two, three in the sixth. And now we head to the bottom of the sixth. It's Victor Robles leading off. We have our top third of the lineup due up in our half of the sixth. And it's Robles grounding out. Now Jake Bauer's turn. And he is going to take ball four. So he earns the walk. And now Coronel up with a man on. A chance to do some damage. He flies one to left center. And that's going to get over. Wow, that looks like it was weirdly misplayed by the left fielder. But I don't know if that's just what they do on a ground rule double. I honestly don't think I've seen a ground rule double in this before. But uh, even I knew that was going to go. I could tell that was going to go over the head of the guy, it seems. Uh, but either way, we will take that to a ground rule double for Coronel. And there are two men in scoring position for Correa with one out. He's over two tonight. He hits one well to left center field. That's going to get into the alley. And that will be good for extra bases. Two runs will score. And it's a 2-0 lead for Tampa Bay. Correa knocks home a couple with a double. And now Devers with a chance. He will be intentionally walked. So Lane Plowman up with two on and one out. He is a double play candidate. And it will be a new pitcher into the game for Minnesota. Andy Himmel. This is a ground ball. Could be two. They will not turn it. Shortstop decides to eat it with no chance to get Plowman at first. So first and third with two down for Juan Mendez. He's got a 3-1 count. He hits it softly to the shortstop. He will go to second in time. And that will retire the side. But Tampa pushes across a couple. They take a 2-0 lead. And now they are in control. Up by two runs. Snell, he will start the seventh inning at least. But I might get someone up immediately. That ball is going to be a well-struck single for Sano. And now I'm going to get someone up for sure. Let's get Pint. And who would be my next guy after Pint? Maybe Edwin Diaz, the way he pitched down the stretch. Or maybe Andy Schrader. I do think Schrader could be a weapon for us. But I think Diaz is probably going to earn that first shot at it. Gomez, too. I kind of want to see maybe give a run at uh, some high leverage. But if Snell can get you know even an out or two in this inning, I'll probably just go right to Pint. Let's see if he can get dads in the lefty. A 2-1 count. This ball is flown to center field. Should be playable for Robles. And it is. One away in the inning. Now Winton Yarn up. 0-2 count. Ground ball could be two to second for one on a first in time. A big 5-4-3 double play. And Snell retires the side in the seventh. We will head to the bottom half. Up by a pair of runs still. Snell only three hits allowed so far. His day might be done. He's at 100 pitches exactly. Seven strikeouts so far, and just the one walk. That is the impressive part, is one he has his command in order. He saw two starts ago against Toronto, and he's doing it again here tonight. So he's got that 65, or he's got that 55 stamina rating. So I'll probably just go right to Josh Pint here for the eighth inning, or Riley Pint, not Josh Pint. But we've got, oh my goodness, I completely forgot that we don't have the DH anymore, and I have to monitor that. I wasn't even thinking about that. Uh, that that was going to have to come into effect in this postseason. But, yep, so he, Pint's going to have to hit this inning. That's my mistake. <laughs> and Donnelly leading things off against a lefty, so it's probably unlikely he's going to have a man on to bunt over. Nope, he will. That is a base hit. So I probably will bunt with Pint. Uh, even though I could probably just steal with Donnelly. But uh, maybe I will try to... Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, yeah, try and steal second. Why not? Let's see. 1-0 and count. Got to wait to get a good pitch to go on now. It's 2-0. Go now. That is 3-0. Wow. This reliever not having a good time. 3-1. God, can you just go? Send Forrest, please. That is going to be grounded. So that works basically as a sacrifice. A ground out for, for uh, Pint. Now Donnelly in scoring position for Robles. That is going to be an intentional walk. So they walk to get the lefty here. Bowers. Bowers slaps it the other way to left. But that is going to be caught. So two away for Coronel. Still facing. There's going to be a new pitcher, Michael Bacchia. Bachica. Bachicha. I don't know. That ball well struck down the line. Deep left field. But it is tracked down by the left fielder, saving a couple runs. It was Winton Yarn. He is a gold glove caliber left fielder there. He make it or he is a gold glove caliber left fielder, and there he made a gold glove caliber play. But now it is Riley Pint on to face the 7-8-9 in the eighth here from Minnesota. And he will try to get the game over to Dan DeYoung. And you see Pint his first year as a full-time reliever with an impressive season. Saw the numbers there, and he strikes out Roortvet. 
Now Paredes with one down. That ball hit into the right center field alley. That is going to be cut off by the right fielder, Plowman, and that will hold Paredes to a single, but a man on nonetheless for Minnesota tying run to the plate. This ball hit to center field, falling fast, and it's down for a base hit. Back-to-back -back singles for the eight and nine, the number eight and number nine hitters here in this lineup. I'm going to get the young up at this point. As it will be Pint to at least face Miranda. 2-0 count. That ball hit to left. But it will be caught by Bowers as did not fall quite fast enough. Two down for it's going to be a pinch hitter. Harrison Bader coming on as he is hitting in the pitcher spot, I believe. And we're going to leave Pint in to face him. Pint, Pint. I will decide how to pronounce his name eventually. And he strikes out swinging. So a scoreless safe. We get the game over to DeYoung. That is what we wanted there out of our setup man, Riley Pint. Pint. <laughs> I'm going to look it up right after I stop recording this, I swear. All right, here we go. On to the bottom of the eighth. Let's keep going batter by batter. See if we can get an insurance runner, too. Correa, it's the uh, good part of the lineup to do some damage here. But Correa lines out a nice play by their shortstop. Isaac Pritt is making a diving stop. Devers! He is going to go bridge. That ball is gone into the right field bleachers there. Can't really call them the bleachers when you are... In a dome, but uh, still a solo home run. That makes it 3 to nothing. We extend the lead now to 3. A solo blast from Devers. Plowman will strike out swinging. Now Juan Mendez up. He has got an 0-1 count. He is going to ground out to the shortstop. That is the third and final out, but we get another run there. Take a 3 nothing lead into the ninth, and it is Dandy Young, one of the best closers in the bigs, on to try and close out this game and send us to the division series. Rowdy Tell is leading it off. He grounds that one to DeYoung, and that is going to be good for out number one. Sano hit by the pitch, so he will reach. Now Josh Dadson up next. Tying run on deck. That ball grounded. Could be two, and they do not turn it, but they get the out at second two away. Winton Yarn, last chance for the Twins. He strikes out swinging, and the Tampa Bay Rays are moving on to the division series. A season that did not look like much was going to come of. Really, you know, through the trade deadline, I know we kind of made those moves to try. I mean, I didn't really think, I didn't really know what to do. Like, I wasn't really in a position where I wanted to sell because we were still sort of in it and kind of hovering around that second wildcard spot. And eventually, you know, we pulled away along with a couple other teams to that second spot. You usually see that happen. Like, the thing about the real-life AL wildcard run this year is that it's kind of surprising a team hasn't pulled away yet. Sometimes you see at the deadline a bunch of 500 teams still in contention, and then, like, one or two teams will sort of pull away for those wildcard spots. But um, this year, we got in this in – the, and this year in real life, you haven't seen that happen yet, and it doesn't seem like it's going to happen because it's a lot of mediocrity uh, in that AL wildcard race. And you're seeing sort of the same thing in the NL now, too, because the Diamondbacks and Rockies have been cold lately. But um, in this, we sort of, we made that jump with Minnesota, the three AL Central teams, or now only two AL Central teams, uh, in Austin. We sort of made that jump with those four teams to compete and uh, compete for that second wild card, and we were able to secure. We got hot at the right time, and now we are, uh, we have continued to stay hot, and now we're going to have a series against Houston. So, pretty cool stuff. We get back in the playoffs once again. I'm very excited, very happy with how this season turned out. That is going to do it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and as always, I'm out. Peace.